Hey everyone, Tim Clapham here from hellolux.com with another Cinema 4D tutorial. This is a quick tip for Redshift and we're going to look at working with the Redshift shader switch node to build a multi-shader and this allows you to switch between various inputs. So essentially you can create one material and have lots of different outputs which gives you a nice amount of variation if you're working with cloners and things like that. Now often you can get away with using noise or seamless tileable textures um, and you don't need to worry about UVs necessarily but you might have some specific objects where you have UV mapped objects and using this technique you can actually paint specific maps for each one and then use fields to sort between them to make sure they're all unique or you could order them etc. So in this scene you can see we have this roadblock in a cloner um, with a plane underneath and just a random effector just affecting the position and rotation of these clones. With the cloner we have this material here which is roadblock and this is the material that's open down here in the node editor. First thing we're going to do is bring in some textures and I've got four here which is going to work with four. You can obviously work with more than that and we're going to use the diffuse color but of course these will work in any of the channels. So the first thing we're just going to do is sort these out so they're in a neat order. If we take this roadblock 01 and just feed that into the color and then in the viewport I'm just going to press NQ and there we go. You probably won't need to do that, but I had textures disabled in the viewport. But now I've done that, you can see that we've got that Roblox 01 on all of those clones. And if we switch to the next one, you can see it changes, etc. for all of them. So how would we control this and switch between them? This is where the shader switch comes in. So in the node editor, press C and type shader switch or just start typing it and this appears and if we come up here and just right click and choose add input all and it will add most of the inputs it's not actually all of them so what we need to do is feed these in so if we take roadblock 01 put it into shader 0 and then take the out color here and put that into here you can see that we're getting the result of this onto all of our blocks but what we can do is we can add each of these The other thing you should do with the shader switch is add in a default shader and if we just take this first one and choose inputs come down and add that as a default shader and it will just revert to this default shader if um, it doesn't find any other inputs. So now if we select this shader switch and come over we've got this shader selector and we can use this to switch between the various shaders that we have as inputs. But to see this, we're going to need to render. So let's come to the render view and start that. Now it's rendering. You can see that we have the roadblock 001 texture on all of our blocks. And if we come over to the shader selector and let's set that to be one and you can see it updates. If we do it to number two, it changes to the next one. If we do it to three, it changes to the next. If we go to shader four, you can see that the whole thing goes white. And the reason for that is because shader four down here doesn't have an input. So it's using this default white color. You could, of course, um, pick a color or alternatively you can feed more elements into the shader switch and at the moment we're feeding bitmap textures into there but you can feed lots of different things into here you could have a whole bunch of nodes creating a certain setup and you could feed that into one of these now we know we can feed multiple textures or shaders etc into the shader switch and switch between them what we need to do is automate that process. I'm going to come up and switch off the redshift render view, come over to the viewport here and I'm going to choose NQ to disable the materials in the viewport. So what we can do is we can assign colors to these clones and we can read that color data and we can use that to switch our shader switch. First thing we're going to do is select the cloner up here and then choose MoGraph Effector and I'm going to use a random effector for this. Now you can see the random effector automatically adjust the position. So let's come to parameter and uncheck position. I'm going to call this one random color. And under the parameter tab color, we're going to choose color mode effector color. Now you could do this with a plain effector and a random field, but I'm just going to use the random effector because it's built for this. Under the effector tab, we have our random mode. OK, and it's currently set to random, but what we can do is we can choose this mode in here called sorted and sorted will take the inputs um, depending on how many there are and it will divide that up equally between zero and one or naught and 100. So you'll have one starting at black and it will end at white and all the others in between should be unique values. You can already see that that's not working correctly. So let's fix that because our minimum and maximum are incorrect. What we need is a minimum of zero. So we're essentially creating values between naught and one. 
In our example, it's pretty clear because we're only using four. So we've got one starting at white over here and then this one ending at black with two gray values in between. In fact, it almost looks as though it's a linear transition between those values. But if we change the seed, you can see that it is randomizing them. It's just because we have so few that sometimes it will look ordered. To read these color values, we can use Redshift user data. Um, let's just select these roadblocks first of all and come to the basic tab and just put this to collapsed. So they take up a little bit less space. We're going to come up here and just press C and add in color user. And that's the color user data. And this will allow us to read attributes from our objects and use those attributes within our node network. So we want to read the MoGraph color. So if we come to the inputs here under presets, in fact, let me just pop this off because I know it's going to go outside of the capture view. We want MoGraph color. Okay, so that's the attribute RSMG color. We can set a default color in here, but if we just take this color user data now and wire that into our surface, come up and press start, you can see that it is reading those values from our clones into our Redshift material. So instead of that, let's feed this back into our surface. So we're back with our shader switch. I'm going to come to this and just right click on here to set that back to the default, which is zero. And now we should be able to use this color user data to switch between our various clones based on the value. So let's see what that does. And there we go. And you can see something has happened, but it hasn't actually worked. You can see that this tile or this material here and this one here and this one here are the same. Whereas this one here is different. And you notice that this is the white clone. So we're starting at zero with black and then we're going point whatever it is, three, 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 <laughs> however, point six, 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 and then one. And as soon as we reach one, it's changing to the next one. So we need to adjust this value coming out of here so it matches the number of clones that we're working with. And we can do that pretty easily with what's called a change range. So I'm just going to come up and let's grab this change range. And we should be able to just drop that on the wire light so we can fold that up because we just want to type the values in manually. We have our old range of minimum zero to one, which is the values on here. And we want to map that from zero to three. So now when we do that, we should see something happen and it's still not working quite right. But you can see we now have three different textures being loaded in, um, but we do have two duplicates. So it's almost as if the sorted mode isn't working quite right. Now, the reason that we're getting this error is due to the fact that we're working with color data in Redshift and the project by default uses linear workflow. So if we were working with color information and we wanted to use that as color in our render, then this would be the right approach. We would want to use linear workflow. But because we're using grayscale values, we're using those color values more as a utility. And we really want that to be a linear transition. We don't want that gamma curve applied. So what we can do is we can invert that gamma by adding in a color correct. So if we come over and move the change range over and the color user data, we want that in between. So we're going to bring our color information in, get rid of that curve, and then we can then change the range and it should work correctly. So to do that, just press C, add in a color correct and drag and drop that onto the wire like so. In the attribute manager, let's just set the gamma here to be 2.2 and hopefully we should see that work. And there you go. And you can see that's now working. We've got a unique bitmap texture on each of our roadblocks. To make this render look a little bit nicer, I think we should possibly subdivide these. I'm going to make the viewport a bit bigger so you can see the result more clearly. Um, let's come up to our cloner, right click and choose render tags RS object under the geometry. I'm going to choose override and enable tessellation. And that's going to give us some smoothing like a, as if we dropped it into a subdivision surface. But you just need to be careful because if we come in and have a look here, you can see that we are in fact getting some like crazy stretching with our UV map. And you, you know, obviously you don't want that. So just make sure if you use this technique, which is more efficient than using the SDS object, if you're rendering with Redshift, you want to come down to the UV smoothing here. And instead of choosing all edges, just choose internal edges. OK, and you can see that's now working. Um, and you can see that the UV map is more or less lining up. Um, it's a bit rubbish in some places, but that's my UV mapping. Um, but now you can see that's working and we should be able to come to our random color. And if we just change the seed so it's different random values, they should stay unique. 
all the time, which shows us it working. And obviously in this one, we've only got four textures, but you know, you could use many, many more than that. So hopefully you found that useful and it's a great way of being able to control many, many clones all through one material. This is a very simple example, just with four diffuse textures, but I'm sure you can appreciate how easy that is to scale up to much more advanced and complex materials. So thanks very much for watching. And if you want to check out some more of our tutorials, please visit hellolux.com for a whole bunch of free tutorials and also professional training.